This is the fourth and final lecture for section 1.8 on bin packing and scheduling. In this lecture, we'll be talking about scheduling problems. So what is a scheduling problem? Well, it's like a bin packing problem, but in this case, the weights are tasks that need to be completed, and the number associated with the task represents the amount of time that the task takes to complete. The bins are processors, which we can think of as computer processors, but we can also just think of as people or teams, but it's whatever entity is going to be completing the task. And we might have a bunch of different ones of those. And so we want to try to figure out how to assign each task to a processor. So in one type of scheduling problem, we have a deadline by which all of the tasks need to be complete. And in this type of problem, the capacity of the bins represents the total amount of time that we have to get everything done. So in this case, the goal becomes to figure out how many processors do we need? In other words, how many folks do we need to get in on this project to work on the various tasks so that everything gets done by the deadline? And in this type of problem, we can just go ahead and use the type of bin packing algorithms that we've already talked about. A different type of problem is an open-ended scheduling problem. So we don't have a deadline, but we do have a fixed number of processors. So we can't bring new people into this project. We just have the teams that we have, we have the processors that we have, and so the goal becomes to try to get everything done as soon as possible. So for that second type of problem, we can't use the bin packing methods that we've talked about already because those rely on having a capacity, on having a a stopping point and then fitting the weights based on how much space is left over. If we don't have a set deadline, if we just have a limited number of processors, then every bin has an unlimited capacity and the idea of fitting no longer makes any sense. So the method we're going to be using is called the longest processing time or LPT algorithm. We're going to start like we did in some of the algorithms that we talked about in the previous lecture, where we're going to sort the task times from largest to smallest. And then we're going to assign each task one at a time to the processor that currently has the least total amount of time assigned to it. So rather than figuring out how much space is remaining, since we don't have a set capacity, we're just going to look at how much has already been assigned to each processor. And if there's a tie between which processors to have the least assigned to them, you just assign the task to the first processor that is tied. So if you have processor one and processor three, and they're tied for which has the least assigned to it, you assign it to processor one because that's the first one on the list. Okay, so let's work through an example. So we have tasks of length 14, 26, 11, and so on, and we want to assign them to processors to three processors, right? So in this case, this is an important part of the information that we're given. We know we have three processors and we want to assign these tasks. So again, this is different from the type of bin packing problem that we talked about before, where starting out, we didn't know how many bins we were going to have at the end. Here, we know we have three processors. So I'm going to write down processor one, processor two, and then processor three. And what I'm going to be keeping track of now is how much has been assigned in total to those processors. Right now, we haven't assigned anything to any processor, so right now everyone's at zero. But our first step is to create a sorted list of tasks. And again, we're going to sort the list from longest or biggest number to smallest number. And I'm going to use the same method that we did in the previous lecture. I'm going to look through my list, find the biggest number, that's 29, and that's just going to go first on my sorted list. Next biggest number is 26. After that, I've got a 22. Then I've got a 21. Then I've got a 16. Then a 14. Then 11. And then finally 8. All right, so now one at a time, we're going to assign each task to the processor that has the least amount of time assigned to it so far. So our first task is 29, and each of our processors has zero assigned to them so far. So we're going to break that three-way tie by assigning the 29 to the first processor that is tied, which in this case is processor 1. Now the total amount of time assigned to processor 1 is 29, so I cross out that zero, and now I've got a 29, and cross 29 off my list. Next up is 26. So now there's a tie between processor 2 and processor 3 for which processor has the least amount of stuff assigned to it. So we're going to break that tie by assigning it to the smallest numbered processor, which is processor number 2. So processor number 2 gets that task of 26. Its total amount assigned, that's what we're keeping track of over here, is now 26, and we cross 26 off of our list. Next up is a 22. The processor with the least amount of 
task or time tasks assigned to it is processor number three. So we take that 22 and assign it to processor number three. So now the total that's been assigned to processor number three is 22. Next up on our list is a task of length 21. Now processor three has the least amount of time assigned to it. So if I'm looking at these numbers, the smallest of those numbers is the 22. So that means that processor number three is the one that's gonna get the next task. So 21 is gonna get assigned to processor number three. And now the total assigned to processor number three, I'm gonna add that 21 to my running total. So 22 plus 21, again, having a little calculator here can be helpful, but that's gonna work out to be 43. Next up, I've got a task of 16. Which processor gets that task? Well, I look at the total amount of time assigned to each processor, and I'm looking for the lowest number. So again, I'm looking over here to see what's the least amount of time assigned to any processor. That's gonna be processor number two. Processor number two only has 26 assigned to it. So we're going to assign the next task, which is 16, to processor number two. So cross 16 on my, off my list, add it down here, and now I update my running total. 26 plus 16 is 42. So that's my new total over here. Next number on my list is 14. Processor number one is now the processor that has the least amount assigned to it. So that's where the 14 is gonna go. So 14 goes here. I cross that off my list. I update my total. 29 plus 14 is 43. So that's the total that I have there. Next up, I've got a task of length 11. If I look at my three processors, processor number two only has 42 assigned to it. The others have 43. So the 11 is going to go to processor number two because that has the least assigned to it so far. Cross 11 off my list and then 42 plus 11 is 53. Finally, I've got one more task, which is an eight. And now processor number one and processor number three are tied for least. And so I give it to processor number one because that's the lowest numbered tied processor. So the eight goes there, cross the eight off my list, 43 plus eight is 51. So I'm gonna write the totals over here again, just to make it a little easier to see, so it's not all crammed in the corner there. So the total here was 51, 53, and 43. So now, how much time does it take to complete our project? Well, after 43 minutes, processor number three is done. It doesn't have any more work to do, but the project isn't done because the other processors haven't finished yet. So it's actually the biggest number on this list. The project, the entire thing, is complete after 53 minutes, hours, whatever the time unit is that we're talking about here. I'm just gonna say minutes just because it's easy to think about. So project is gonna be complete after 53 minutes. So if we think about how well we did, what we can do, and we've done this before, we can add up all of the numbers and we get 147. And so in theory, if we could evenly divide all of the work among our three processors, 147 divided by three, we might hope to be able to do that to give exactly 49 minutes of work to each of the three processors. Now that might not actually be possible. There might not be a way to combine these numbers together to get that to actually happen, but it suggests that we might be able to do better than the 53 that we got in the previous solution. And in fact, we can do better. As usual, our algorithm here doesn't find the, the best possible answer. It found a pretty good answer, 53 minutes, but in this case, there is a solution that you can see here where all of the tasks are complete after 50 minutes. It turns out that that ideal 49 is not actually possible for these numbers. So to summarize this section, uh, bin packing methods and bin packing ideas can be applied to a lot of different situations. And when possible, it's not always possible, but when it's possible, we wanna sort the objects or tasks or whatever it is we're talking about from largest to smallest before we pack them. And then scheduling problems, which we talked about in this lecture, are an example of a type of bin packing problem where the bins have an unlimited capacity.